Today we're going to be talking about sourdough with an explanation as to what it is and a few tips and hints of how to make it at home. So sourdough is a style of bread that relies on the natural occurrence between two ingredients when they're put together. Two simple ingredients, flour and water. So instead of packaged yeasts that are used inside most conventional loaves of bread that you'll buy in the shop, sourdough relies solely on the wild yeasts. So when mixed with water, they begin to grow and form bubbles that make the sourdough rise. Sourdough requires a lot of patience. Um, it can take days, or it does take days. So if you don't have days, make sure you don't have too much of a busy social life, which is why so many people started having a go at making sourdoughs in lockdown. Perfect opportunity and perfect time. When making um, sourdough, you need an organic flour. We'll get onto the starter and how to make the starter soon, but the starter, the key element is organic flour and water. Now when you make bread, most bakers out there you'll know that you use um, strong white bread flour to make your loaf of bread. Um, we, you do also with sourdough, but with the starter, you can use any, any flour as long as it's organic. I've got a white rye flour here. Um, which is perfect. So the bacteria within the flour is a good bacteria. Um, it's not a bacteria that can harm you. It produces lactic acid, which creates that sour flavour. The yeast inside the flour this creates alcohol and carbon dioxide. The alcohol enhances that flavour and the carbon dioxide creates all those bubbles. So this is the, Ra the raisin agent. I've got my sourdough starter here. That I've bought with you, well, bought with me, sorry. Um, I've kept it in this jar. It's good to have in a glass jar or a plastic jar, something see through, and then you can see what's going on inside there. There's two, two uses to a sourdough starter. It's your raisin agent for when we're making a sourdough loaf. If you're not making a sourdough loaf and you're gonna use a, make a regular loaf, this is also a great addition to add to it because it enhances the flavor. It also, secondly, extends that shelf life. First hurdle to create sourdough is creating your starter. It's very, very important to use the organic flour in this step because this is the, the beginning of life for your, for your bread. Um, at home we call this the monster. It lives in my fridge. The monster because it has a mind of it, its own. It, it's, it's a living thing. You feed it, you look after it, you watch it grow. You nurture it, you take care of the it. The mother of the sourdough, the most important thing. Step by step, 100 grams of flour and 100 grams of water. The flour must be organic, so 100 grams of organic flour and 100 grams of water. It's easier to measure your water in grams so you get an exact uh, measurement against the flour, the correct ratio. At this stage, when you first introduce the flour and the water, an optional method is to add a starter aid yes. wedge of apple a squeeze of lemon juice it's basically something in there with a bit of acidity to help give it a bit of a kick start leave that covered for 24 hours at room temperature and let the marriage begin to work its magic once the 24 hours is up come back to it add another 100 grams of flour and another 100 grams of water if you didn't put the starter aid in there the apple or the lemon juice or something similar um, then repeat that process once more, come back to it, 24 hours, another 100 grams of flour, another 100, 100 grams of water, so another mix, leave it aside. We begin to see plenty of bubbles all through this. You'll see lots of bubbles, the bubbles on the top, they'll be rising, it can take a day or two, so you may, you may need to leave it for 48 or 72 hours before you see anything. Once you get to that stage, you're going to pour about three quarters of it away into a bowl, don't discard it. You can mix that with a little bit of flour, whack that into a frying pan with a bit of butter, beautiful crumpets. So pour three quarters of it away and replace the amount you've thrown away with some more flour, the same amount of flour and water to what you've just thrown away. Just bulk it back up to what it was. Just leave it on the side. Once you begin to see it bubble, that's, that's ready to use, that's your starter. Now, starters need a fair bit of nurturing. They need looking after, they need care. In our house, it's the monster, it's in the fridge. Um, 
we keep it in the fridge because we don't use it every single day. If you're using it every day in the south side of the fridge, this needs feeding every day. Feeding, by the feeding, I mean giving it flour and giving it water. So the bacteria and the yeast are gonna constantly be wanting to eat. They're like you and me, they wanna, they wanna survive. So we need, to, we need to show them some love, a bit of attention. If you're gonna not use it every day like me and leave it in the fridge, a weekly feed is fine. Always feed with more flour and water than there is starter. So you're always gonna be using some. If you're using this every day, you're always gonna take some out, say 200 grams to put inside your loaf. And that 200 grams is then gonna need replacing with flour and water, plus a tiny little bit extra, just so that there's always a little bit more ratio than the starter that's left. So if you add 400 grams in here, for example, to take 200 grams out, you could put in, um, add 300 grams. Yeah. To use the starter, you need to give it a feed and bring it to room temperature if it's been in the fridge. If not, just leave, give it a feed and leave it out. 12 to 24 hours after a feed, once it's doubled inside, that yeast is active, it's a happy yeast, that can be then put into your dough to create your bread. If you leave this for too long without feeding, you'll notice a layer of liquid form across the top. That's a layer of acid and alcohol. Now if this happens, pour around three quarters of your starter away, and then we're gonna give it a very small feed, just a spoon, small spoon of flour added into there. If you put, if you give it a normal feed, which is quite a large amount of flour, you're likely to kill off the bacteria because it's not, it won't be used to it. It's kind of like if you and I, um, hadn't eaten for a long time when we were severely dehydrated and had a glass of water, if it doesn't, it doesn't settle, it often come back up, it's the same thing. And then the next day, leave out for 24 hours, the next day, give it a normal feed, because it would have been, it will be uh, accustomed to it again. How to make your sourdough? To make a sourdough, the dough's always very wet with sourdough, so it can be quite off-putting to want to knead it. It's, always important to give it a bit of a knead because it's just going to help strengthen the gluten um, which is going to help with the shape when your bread is rising. It's going to be messy but it's going to be worth it and once it's kneaded proving is key with your sourdough because all of those all of the natural ingredients in here all of that acid all of that gas all of that alcohol that needs the time to work its magic and with the correct atmosphere, the correct temperature, it's gonna slowly, slowly rise and that flavor is gonna enhance. You're gonna make it that day for about four to six hours proving, should be okay. You should see it would have, should have doubled in size or noticeably risen. If you're not gonna make it that day, or it's late in the day and you haven't got time to wait, or you don't wanna wake up at four in the morning basically because you're making it at 10 o'clock at night, for example, you can um, prove it for a couple of hours outside the fridge. It's always best to give it that kickstart outside the fridge and then put it into the fridge leave it in there overnight, works fine. Pull it out the next day, you're good to go. Get a floured surface, you're gonna gently empty that dough onto the floured surface, and you need to shape it very, very carefully with your hands, shape it. You don't wanna knock any of that natural gas which is taking these guys so long to produce out of that dough. And then place it into, if you have one, a proven basket. If you don't have a proving basket, you can use a bowl um, lined with a tea cloth which has been dusted with flour. Two to three hours, or three to four even, outside of a fridge. If you're gonna put it in the fridge again, leave it outside for a couple of hours to give it a kick start, and then put it in the fridge and you can keep it in the fridge overnight or for the day until you're ready to use it. So if you're gonna do it on a tray, flat, uh, floured surface, and if you're going to do it on the Dutch oven, into your container, into your metal container. It needs to be very gently turned out of your basket or your bowl because you don't want to knock any of that gas out. This isn't going to prove again. This is as it is. So if you knock any air out of there, it's not coming back. And then with a, if you have a lathe, which is a special tool scoring bread, or you can use a very sharp knife couple of scores across the top, dust with flour, good to go. If you're going into an oven um, just on a tray,
then place a tray of water in the base of the oven as well to create a bit of steam. Steam is very important when you're baking bread because you're going to get that natural, uh, the, the good crust. You want that good crust on a loaf, crusty loaf. It's put it into a Dutch oven, which is a metal container with a metal lid. You're gonna, it's going to generate its own steam inside there and it's going to create a beautiful crust so you won't need the tray of water. Uh, very hot oven, very important. So when you preheat in your oven, whack it up to 240, 250 degrees. When you put your bread in the oven, you can whack that down to about 200, 210. Depending on the size of your loaf, that's going to take half hour, 40 minutes to cook. It'll be perfect. Basic recipe to use with all of the tips that we've gone through. Um, 400 grams of strong white bread flour, 10 grams of salt, 200 grams of the starter, 270 grams of water. Combine it all together and follow the processes of kneading and proving that we've discussed. I hope that's been useful. Have a great time baking sourdoughs at home. Let us know how you get on with your starters. Remember, look after them, they're important. And send in any photos you may have of your loaves to St. Anne's uh, Instagram pages. Enjoy.